guys and welcome back to another video. I am filming a sit down chatty summer camp Q&A today. Now I have filmed so many of these over the years but I always like to redo some of them and I always get new questions being asked so thought it'd be nice to sit down and just answer a few questions, give you some answers and give you a bit of an insight on kind of like the summer at camp whether you're already signed up, whether you're thinking about signing up, hopefully this helps. And if you're new here my name is Victoria. I've worked at summer camps now since 2018. This will be my fifth summer coming up. I had to miss out on two summers because of Covid and unfortunately but I love summer camp so much I go to a camp in Pennsylvania called Tyler Hill and I've gone to the same camp every single year and it is truly my summer home and I love it so much but yeah little bit of background info I like to think I have a fair bit of summer camp knowledge and I love sharing it with you guys I think a big thing for me when I went to camp for the first time there was no information on the internet whatsoever about going to summer camp and I was terrified before going and now having a lot of information myself from just my experiences in doing it I want to be able to share that with you so yeah hopefully this helps and thanks for watching okay so the first question I'm going to answer is how many days and hours do you work at camp now this is going to be completely different depending on the camp you work at there's also different types of camps you can work at for example my camp is a seven week sleepaway camp so the kids are there for seven weeks but there are also day camps and there are also session camps where kids just come for a week at a time or maybe three weeks then you get a new group of kids come day camps the kids literally just come for the day so you might have the evenings off and weekends off so it will completely depend on the camp that you go to but for my camp for example we have four evenings off a week and one day off a week and one thing you have to remember about camp is that in my opinion it doesn't feel like real work when some of my activities consist of me taking my kids down to gymnastics or to the lake and go water skiing or go to outdoor adventure or go and play baseball do different things that doesn't feel like work to me yes it's tiring and yes the days can be long at camp but I don't personally view that as work I have so much fun when I go so that's something you've kind of got to take into account is that the working days at camp aren't the same as a working day in a normal everyday job that you would have back home but at my camp we would normally wake up at around eight o'clock and then depending on the age group of kids will obviously depend on that time they go to sleep so for example my girls last year were seniors and their curfew was half 10 and we would try and be in bed and try and have lights out by 11 some people might have been off that evening so they would sign out at half nine and other staff would be on duty looking after the kids so yeah it's a hard one to answer because there's no set hours and days that you really work but time off is something i definitely recommend you asking about when you are interviewing with camps try and find out how many days off you have what their nights off are like kind of what they can help you do on your time off because that is a big factor i always find that like being able to spend your time off doing stuff that you enjoy doing with people you want to be with is really going to help the whole camp process it's going to make everything run so much smoother if you have a good day off you come back to camp feeling refreshed and ready to go this kind of leads on to the next question which is do you have to stay awake if you're on duty now camps will be completely different but for example if my girls were asleep by 11 the staff that were on duty could also go to sleep they didn't have to stay awake all night like you obviously have to sleep as well but it wouldn't be a case of if the kids went back to the bunk and they were just getting ready for bed like they were brushing their teeth getting into pajamas like you couldn't just go up to bed and go to sleep like put your headphones in and go to sleep you couldn't do that you obviously have to be still helping with the kids getting them ready for bed getting all that sorted and then once they're in bed and going to sleep that's when you'd be able to go to sleep as well but just remember like you can be woken up at any time in the night like if one of your kids needs something you are there to help like you are there if they need anything so just bear that in mind that sometimes you might get woken up in the night if your camp needs you but that's all part of the job okay next question is general counselor or specialist now i have kind of experienced both roles at camp and they are completely different and there's pros and cons to both of them for example if you are a general counselor you stay with the same group of kids day in day out you will literally wake up with them you'll go to breakfast with them go to all the activities have lunch with them, rest hour, dinner, evening activities, go to bed and do it all again. Like you stay with the same group of kids. Now, if you're a specialist, we kind of, I kind of always describe it as the work away parent. So it's kind of like you still live in the bunk with the kids exactly the same and you would still wake up with them, go to breakfast, get them ready for the day. But then when activities are starting, you would head to your activity area and you would be there for the day. You obviously come back for lunch and rest hour and still get to like rejoin the group of kids that you have. But you kind of spend your daytime, the activity times away at your area and you see lots of different kids come down to you so obviously as a general counselor you get to take the same group of kids you go around to all the activities and 
it's kind of normal that you form relationships with those kids a little bit faster than the specialists do just because you are with them all day every day but then on the flip side the specialists get to see all the other kids and they work down an area and that way you get to form relationships with all different kids and counselors that you have come down to your area as well so there really is no right or wrong answer both roles are amazing it kind of just will depend on your experience and if you have a specialty activity area that you love and you have a big passion for that you can see yourself going in and doing at camp for example some specialty roles at my camp would be like lifeguarding arts and crafts rock wall all the sports like basketball football soccer gymnastics dance fitness like there's loads of different things you can do at camp and obviously you then have the general counselor option again things can vary depending on the camp that you go to but for us general counselors and specialist counselors will still live in the bunk and have a group of kids it's just how they spend their day that is slightly different okay next question is is it hard being away from home now i'm actually going to film a whole other video on kind of like homesickness and feeling like maybe nervous about going to camp because it is completely normal and it would be strange if you weren't going to miss home or if you were not a little bit nervous like it's normal to be nervous about going and doing something like this because it is a huge thing but something to remember is that home is only a phone call away at my camp we want you to be able to stay in touch with people at home we don't want you to come all the way to America and then feel like you can't get in touch with home you can't FaceTime your mom you can't call your friends like there is always time to do that and we want to help you feel as settled as possible when you get to camp so yes it's completely normal to miss home and you probably will miss home and that's okay. But just know that you do have the opportunity to stay in touch with home as and when possible. Obviously, you don't want to spend your entire time glued to your phone. You won't be able to physically. It's impossible. So you need to really go into camp with an open mind and know that home is always there. And if you are struggling, you can just ask for a little bit of time. Say, can I take 20 minutes to just go and FaceTime home? I'm really struggling. I just want to have a chat. And that's okay. You just need to be open about it. But yeah, missing home is normal. But one thing to also remember is that Camp is only seven weeks long. You're probably only away for like three months. And when I tell you it will be the quickest three months of your entire life, I'm not exaggerating. Like camp goes so fast. And then if you're traveling afterwards, that's going to go so fast as well. So enjoy it whilst you can because you'll be sat at home after camp is finished wishing you were back there. Okay, next question is when should I start camp shopping? I've literally just filmed my first summer camp shopping haul video for the 2024 season. So stay tuned for that. I don't know if that video is going to go before this one actually. But yeah, there's no right or wrong time to start summer camp shopping. I always start really early because I like buying little bits gradually as opposed to having to do one big huge shop right before camp because that would just stress me out but honestly whatever feels right for you if you're out and about and you see something you like the look of and it's going to work for camp buy it okay next question is what date do i need to be at camp by now again this will be completely dependent on the camp i know some people that go out to camp as early as like the end of may and most camps i find you do have to be there or they start around the middle of june that's when orientation will start and normally they run until the middle of august again some camps can be earlier some camps can be later if you have a late start date or say you have exams or you can't fly out to a little bit later i would just recommend calling an agency and just seeing what their cutoff date is or what camps they work with and kind of what the latest date is that you can go but there's no specific date you have to be there it's kind of like over a couple of weeks but when you do your application they'll ask for your earliest arrival date and then they'll be able to find camps accordingly that kind of match your start date okay next question is how many more years will i go to camp honestly guys i can see myself going to camp for a very very long time it works so well with what i do all year round and i know i'm really really lucky that it does work so well because i know so many people that would love to come to camp but just can't because they've either got into a job that they love and they just don't want to leave and risk not having when they come back so i am really lucky that camp just works with what i do and yeah i can see myself going for a very long time i can see myself having kids and taking my kids to camp genuinely like i love it that much okay next question is how do i find the right camp now i did film a complete video on this so i'll leave that link down below if you want to go and watch that but i do think it's quite like i feel like there is a camp out there for everyone and i know it sounds really cheesy but if you get rejected from a camp that you think is maybe your top camp and you're like this is the only one i wanted to go to that happened for a reason and there is a right camp out there for you i think it's really important to have an open mind throughout this whole process there are so many amazing camps out in america that you've just got to make sure you do your research you've got to make sure you use your agency your agency is there to help find you the best camp and yeah i do think that you do get a feel for it like i remember when i first looked on the tyler hill website i was like oh my god this looks absolutely phenomenal i got a family feel straight away i just felt like i could see myself going to that camp and then i had my interview and it was just 
it was just amazing and then the rest is history so yeah i do think you get a feel for it and on the interview you definitely do as well so a big thing i always say to people is don't turn down interviews if you're getting offered an interview by a camp but maybe their website doesn't quite show you exactly what you want to see or it doesn't look like the kind of place you can see yourself going still interview with that camp because you have no idea how that call could go and you could have that interview and literally be like oh my god this is the camp for me so yeah have an open mind do lots of research and yeah, the right camp is out there. Okay, and the next question I'm gonna talk about in this video is, can I get in touch with counselors beforehand? Now, again, this is gonna depend on the camp, but a big thing that I know a lot of camps have started to do is have like WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups created a few months before camp just to get people to know each other before going. I'd also really recommend joining my Facebook group. I'll leave a little screenshot of it on here. Um, there's like 7.8K members in there now, which is wild. But this Facebook group has been so, so good for so many people. And I have so many people message me saying that it's helped them connect with so many people going to camp or even just people going on their flight or different things. It's just a really good way to find a lot of people that are going to the same camp or doing the same thing as you. So yeah, definitely recommend joining that. And you could even just put in there like anyone going to this camp or anyone flying on this date and you'll find lots of people that are doing the same thing but yeah us at Tyler Hill we have like whatsapp groups and facebook groups going already and everyone's getting to know each other which is so exciting if your camp hasn't done that yet don't worry a lot of camps will do it just a few months before and you can always feel free to reach out drop them an email and ask if they have any groups that you can kind of get to know the staff that are going to that camp but yeah most camps want you to be able to get to know people before going orientation is such an amazing week but it's quite short so it's nice if you already kind of know a few people that are going before or orientation even starts i always love using this example as well but last summer there was a group of i want to say like 15 people most of them i not i think all of them were new staff going to tyler hill and they all organized to go out to new york for like four days before camp started and just have like a little holiday and none of them knew each other and they were able to do that through like whatsapp groups and facebook groups and they planned a little holiday and it looked so much fun so yeah definitely try and get in touch with people that go in join my facebook group email your camps and try and go from there but yeah that's all i'm going to talk about in this video guys i hope that helped and gave you a little bit of insight on some of those questions if you have any other questions please leave them down below or feel free to drop me a message on instagram i'm always happy to help and i can always film part two i don't even know how many parts of this it would be now if i went back to the start and i saw how many camp q a's i've done because i've done so many but yeah get excited the countdown to camp is well and truly on yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video Bye.